Hey guys, uh, due to a request, I'm going to talk a little bit about my PVM and uh, how to set it up for retro games. The PVM I currently have is a PVM14L5. Uh, I got it off a guy locally, uh, maybe a little over a year ago. Paid $80 for it. Um, the first thing you'll notice about it, it's a rather small PVM. It's only 14 inch screen. Uh, they do come larger. I think there's one that's the same model type but larger. I think it comes in a 20 inch screen. And I have an older PVM that's not with me now. It's in storage and it's I think it's either a 20 or a 25 inch. Um, but the thing about this one is it's one of the newer PVMs. I think it I think it's from 2005. It may be one of the last CRT types. So it, it, the quality of it is a lot better, and what it can do is a lot better than, say, my, you know, my older one, probably from the mid mid 90s. Um, but the cool thing about this is it has it has a lot of features. Um, you can do it does RGB, it does component, which is really cool. It does progressive scan. So technically, it's sort of the elusive, you know, EDTF, uh, ED, <laughs> it EDTV. The, but anyways, I, I know it does 480p progressive scan, and I think it even does 720p and 1080i. The other resolutions, those higher ones, it may need an add-on card. I'm not sure about that, though, but I know for sure it does 480p, which I'll actually show you how to do over component. Um, at first, the small screen size actually did bother me. I thought it was a little too small. I still think it's a little bit too small. But uh, you know, when you're if you sit real close to it, kind of like a couple feet away, it's it's not that bad. It's kind of like an old computer monitor screen because early computer monitors really weren't that big either. So if you're just sitting a couple feet away, you don't really notice. I've been gaming on this a lot recently, and the picture quality is really good. And I don't know, you know, when I look back, uh, think back of the gaming in my memory, it's not really any different than on this screen and or on like a huge LCD. I still it's relatively the same size in my memory, but you know, I, I play it while laying down in bed, so it's only a couple feet from me, so it really, the size thing really isn't a big deal. Um, okay, I was asked what's the difference between, you know, if you're going RGB, and I'm going to show you how to retro game in RGB on this thing, what should you go for? Should you go for a Euroscart standard or the Japanese 21 pin standard? And I'm definitely going to say go for the Euro standard, the SCART standard. Um, as far as quality, they're both exactly the same. Um, really, they're also incompatible. So if you have a, something like a SCART device, or let's say you have a TV and it has a Japanese 21 pin connection on the back and you put in a SCART cable, it, they look identical. The connectors look identical, but you could definitely damage something connecting them up. Uh, for instance, if you used a, if you had a uh, 21 pin Japanese RGB cable for like a Super Nintendo and then you hooked it up to a SCART device, you could damage something. Um, but back to the main question, what would you go for? I would definitely 100% say do SCART. Go for Euro SCART. And the reason for that is it was just a much more accepted uh, format. It, uh, 21 pin RGB in Japan never really took off at least not to the massive degree that RGB SCART in Europe did. So just finding things for SCART is so much easier. If you go on eBay and you look for an RGB cable for, say, Super Nintendo or Dreamcast or whatever, chances are the bulk of them are going to be Euro SCART. Finding um, monitors that deal with Euro SCART people, um, you know, multi-SCART connectors, it's just, it's just a lot easier if you go with Euro SCART over 21-pin uh, Japanese standard of RGB. So, we need to look at the back of this real quick. Alright, here we have the back of the unit. Uh, you can see there's two plates up here that can be removed. Those are for add-on cards. I'm not 100% sure what the add-on cards do, um, other than I you know, give you extra, more connections. Uh, I, I think I've seen some and they have com connectors for uh, like an extra second component hookup. Uh, they may allow for higher resolution, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you can see right off there's a lot of BNC connectors, or uh, you know, BNC. Anyways, those are more for, uh, you find those on a lot of professional grade equipment, professional grade monitors and things like that. They allow a, a better connection. I don't think, I think the big draw of them is they can they lock the connector in place. 
Uh, but other than that, I don't think they transmit the signal any better than a standard RCA. So here's your power. S video, there's these are all there's lines in and out. Um, so you can hook up something through S video. Oh, 2004, I was wrong. Well, close. I think I said 2005. Um, and down here is your composite. Now, what you need is you need one of these. These are a BNC to RCA connector. You can see one is BNC and the other is RCA. And these are really cheap. You can get them off eBay. I got like a dozen of them for a couple bucks. And all you do is, and then you, they snap, they turn. Anyways, they do. They, there you go. They snap right into place. See? And then, voila, it's an RCA connector. And you can put in any standard RCA connection. So, you're going to need several of these if you want to use the See, they, they're a little bit tricky. There we go. So, here we have, this is line A, so you're probably going to either be using S-Video or uh, Composite. Line B, it looks like it's just Composite. The audio, I think that's just, there's no speakers in this. As far as I can tell, there's no speakers in this. I've never played around with it. I've never tried, but I don't think there's speakers in this thing. So I think these are just pass-throughs for the audio. Uh, here's your RGB component. So it's actually this area and this. And this, these connectors you either use for a component or straight RGB. So with component, you're just going to hook them up, one, two, three, and then uh, it's going to be here, 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 and here for RGB. RGB and component are pretty much the same as far as quality goes. Um, RGB technically is going to be a little bit better Im of an image because you're separating the sync from the color and the, the corona and the luma. but most people aren't going to be able to tell. The, the difference is so minor. Um, but the thing with component is, other than a lot of later systems supporting it, is you can also do progressive scan over it, which you can't over RGB as far as I know. Um, the other, that's for like a remote, something else with audio, serial remotes. I don't really bother with those. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to hook something. The, the rest, this is self-explanatory. For S-Video, just plug in S-Video cable. For a composite, you just, you know, RC, stick in the composite line. But we're going to go over how to set this thing up for RGB and then component for the best quality in retro gaming. It's really what you want this monitor for. You're not going to buy this monitor just to do S-Video or composite, although you could, and it still looks excellent, better than a standard television this is what you really want it for, these connections. So I'm going to go over that really quick here. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to hook up a system. You're going to need a couple things for RGB. First, you're going to need a system that outputs RGB, obviously. Um, here I have an old ratty yellowed Super Nintendo for outputting RGB. Now most, almost every single system is going to put out, output RGB. Um, there's very few that don't. Uh, the original Nintendo, the NES doesn't, and the uh, Panasonic 3DO does not output RGB, although both can be modded to output RGB, so that's not really an issue. Um, the SNES 2 actually doesn't output RGB, but there's a real kind of simple mod that you can do that it will output RGB, so for simplicity, I just got this old yellowed Super Nintendo. Second thing we're going to need is, in my case, like I said, I chose Euroscart over Japanese 21 pin. So the next thing you're going to need is a Euroscart cable for whichever system you're working with. And this is for the Super Nintendo. I got this off eBay. Um, I think from someone that, that handmade these. It's really good quality. I think it paid, paid out like $25 for it. That's that's about the rate for it. But you know, it looks the back will look just whatever connector that your chosen system. Um, I have one of these for the Model 1 Genesis, I have one of these for the PlayStation, it's they're really easy to find and that would be a SCART connector. Um, now I think usually these carry area like S, in Europe they use this for everything. The S video signal goes through here, composite goes through here, and uh, RGB goes through here too. So you just, you know, plug it in 
Now you're going to need a way, obviously on our PVM, there's no SCART. Um, also something I didn't mention about the, the PVM, it also does PAL signal. So you know, um, if you're playing a Euro system and you have a voltage converter, you should be able to just plug it in, like if you're using S-Video or PAL video. I think RGB it doesn't matter. RGB doesn't care if it's PAL or not, but for other uh, standards, it will, it, it's PAL compatible, which is nice. But anyways, that's a tangent. What we're going to need, we're going to need a way to connect this to the connector on the back of the PVM. And if you remember, the connector on the back of the PVM did not look like this at all. So you're going to need a SCART to PVM connector. And again, I got this off. Same, same person I actually got this the SCART cable off of is the PVM connector. And one end is going to look like this. And it kind of looks like it's composite, but instead of, or component, but instead of three, you have four BNC connectors. So here's your red, your green, and your blue, and then you're going to have a fourth one. This one's colored black. And this, is, this carries your vertical and horizontal sync information. Um, on a component connector, those are all, I think those are with the green one maybe, uh, that information. And on the other side of that, you're going to need a female SCART connector. And also on mine, to make things really easy, you want a little a breakout cable with your stereo, RCA stereo for sound. Um, it just makes it easier for us here in the US. So you've got your SCART cable, you've got your PVM connector. Oops. There you go. Connect them. And then you're going to want to connect to the PVM next. Okay, so to connect to the PVM, it's really easy. You just, right here. Uh, for, uh, top one is G. There you go. Then B. Red, R. And then your sink, and right here, sink. And that's it. It's connected up. You see your other end, you know, it comes up here, it goes to your, your SCART going in and right, this is, you're going to be able to pass through your video in RGB now. Um, then remember this, there's a lot of ways to hook up your audio if you have an external system. So I use, I actually use computer speakers and it's a little bit strange, but you know, I have this. And then I put these converters on to turn male to female. And then, you know, I connect them up and then this goes, it's a female and then I have one of these and then it hooks into here and then this splits and then this I just put into a PC speaker, a pair of PC speakers and voila, I have sound. So that's gonna be RGB. Component is pretty much the same thing, but without the sync connection. So here, uh, this is for a Wii. So here's your Wii, here's your audio, and there's your component. And you get those uh, component to RCA connectors I talked about earlier. Let's put them on, and it's the same thing. Green, blue, and red. No sync. And now I'm gonna show you, you, you might have an issue after it. Actually, in the software, on the menu, you have to set up uh, it doesn't automatically detect if it's component or RGB, so you're going to have to do that in a menu, which I'll show you in a second. 
and it says RGB, no sync. But we can obviously see something is being transmitted here. So there's right on the side here, there is a button and you can press it and then that lights up your menu screen. And these are your options. So this is how you pick line A, which I think is your composite Nest Video, line B is composite RGB component because they're all kind of on the same uh, same source. Um, turn off the X, see this, here's our sync button. So it, sync is on because it was set for RGB. So first thing you want to do is turn off sync. So as it's set up right now with RGB comp and sync, an RGB signal would go through fine. So first thing we want to Turn off exit sync, stabilizes the picture. Now the cool thing that I love about this is it tells you what uh, format it's sending. So 480, 60, uh, 60 hertz I think, and then P for progressive scan. And it tells you the type, it said NTSC. But as you can tell right away, it's green. Because it's still not set, it's still set up for RGB and not components. So what you want to do my, there's a menu button right here. So you go into menu and then format RGB, which we want it to be in component. So, so we want to go down, I believe this is to this, it says RGB component select and it's RGB. We don't want that. So enter and then whoops. Oh, this, well, this always messes me up. It's it's not extremely. Uh, there we go. You hit enter twice, and ta-da! Turn it into uh, switch it to component. Hit enter again to get out. And uh, so now format is component. Uh, 480, 60 hertz, P for progressive scan. And then we get out of this there. And there you go. Component. Uh, in progressive scan. So that is how you set it up to do component. All right, and now just for the sake of doing it, I hooked up my Super Nintendo via RGB, but I left it as it was before set up for component. So as you can see, monitor does not like that. So first thing we re-enable the sync. You just hook it up like I showed you in the first place. And now we have a stable picture um, for a 60 Hertz I. It's interlaced now, but it's still set to component, and it is now instead of green, you can see the screen is overly red. So, just do the same thing we did before. Right there. Enter, enter, RGB, and voila. And there you go. Now it's in RGB, and we're playing Super Nintendo in RGB. And that's pretty much it. Um, so there's some cool things. Uh, there's an underscan. I'm not sure what that does exactly, but I know it makes the screen doesn't take it up. There's also a uh, ah here you can actually turn it into widescreen mode if you have widescreen stuff. It, obviously, it's a little weird because the screen is so small. It, it looks like it just smashes it, but uh, I think that gets rid of the black. I'm not sure what that. I guess widescreen on this maybe you still can't see the side so it compresses it so now you can it is widescreen but it's smaller but you're really not going to be watching much widescreen on this if you're classic retro gaming so the degauss uh, you can if you want it it's mostly good for like testing purposes but you can also set it up in the menu that it will always display um, what format it's in which is nice if you're doing testing uh, I think there's also an option to set up where it will if it changes like you're playing a game and it switches to a different kind of resolution it will tell you which is pretty neat so yeah that's about it for the PVM and hooking up component and RGB uh, it's the S video and composite it's self explanatory it's really easy especially S video so hope you like the video and I hope it helps thanks for watching